Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the Gadget Show Web TV. It's the one where I count down the very best tech that's hit the market over the past year. And thanks to our recent online poll, for the first time ever, it's you, the Gadget Show viewers, who have chosen the running order. So, let's get cracking and find out what you've voted as the best technology of 2013. Technology that will, of course, make perfect Christmas presents for gadget-hungry consumers. In at the number 50 spot, you voted the sports MP3 player, the accessories, Aqua Note. When Jason and Rachel worked up a sweat with them earlier this year, they were the clear favourite. With the ability to wrap neatly round your head and boasting 10 hours of battery life, they'll make the perfect player for any avid gym-goer. Coming in at number 49, it's Seawee's Photo Book. When I tried out a wide selection of photo books earlier this year, Seawee's offering came up trumps. With its intuitive user interface, brilliant print quality, and the ability to link to videos online through QR codes, it's perfect for creating an embarrassing Christmas collation of photos. At 48 is the Logitech UE Smart Radio. When fun-loving criminal Huey Morgan tested three of the latest internet radios, this one topped his list. Boom. And what a logo. That's easy. If I can do this stuff, kids can do this stuff. Because I'm mentally impaired. <laughs> and at 47, it's my favourite lawnmower, the Works WG785E, which I tested by trimming Hemel Hempstead's famous magic roundabout. It's got a quiet mode that cuts the noise to just 70 decibels. On a noisy roundabout like this, you literally can't hear it. In at 46, you voted Samsung's soundbar, the HWF750. When pub landlord and comedy favourite Al Murray helped us test three mid-range models by playing some of his own live show material on them, this was, for the price, his top choice. You were clearly getting stereo definition out of it and a lot more bottom as well. Bigger bottom. We like bigger bottom. At 45, it's Samsung's budget compact camera, the DV150F. It's got built-in Wi-Fi and two LCD screens. And when Big Brother's bit on the side presenter Jamie East gave it the red carpet treatment at a TV awards ceremony, it beat its two competitors to produce some excellent snaps. Well, this is quite good. It's picking up every crevice of Brian Connolly's craggy face. At 44 is Olympic champion and bike nut Jonathan Edwards' favourite bike computer, the Garmin Edge 510. Garmin's got it spot on. It is. It's a serious bit of kit for kind of serious bike users. Hitting the number 43 spot is Sony's waterproof MP3 player, the NWZ W273, put to the test by one of the most successful British swimmers of all time, Mark Foster, they really couldn't have got a more qualified tick of approval. At 42 is the Jawbone Up Fitness Band, which is the perfect thing to buy to make sure you're burning off those excess Christmas calories. Coming in at 41, it's TomTom's iOS app. Although Apple and Google now have turn-by-turn -turn directions built into their own apps, TomTom -tom proved that they're still king of navigation when Janet Street Porter took the best apps on a jaunt around South London with her phone as her only guide. This is miles better than the other one, just had all the buildings on it. I mean, who gives a toss about the buildings? At 40 are these Bowers and Wilkins P3s. They're an elegantly designed pair of compact, folding headphones that give a warm sound without an overpowering bass. If, on the other hand, you prefer in-ear headphones, you may appreciate what you've voted in at number 39, these Bose QC20Is. They sound great, they offer very impressive noise cancellation, and you don't have to shove them deep into your ears to have that noise cancellation effect. It's great to see Bose bringing their noise reduction expertise to the in-ear arena. And in at number 38 is the Lenovo Yoga. It has a brilliant hinged keyboard, touchscreen, and superb screen quality. It was the clear winner of my group test of hybrid touchscreen laptops earlier this year. At number 37, it's the Parrot Zix Bluetooth headphones. They offer excellent sound quality and noise isolation, lovely design, and integrated touch-sensitive controls. And they stood head and shoulders above the competition in Jason and Rachel's tests. 
You know what? I really wanted to like these because they look so good. Beautiful. But I don't like them. Really? <laughs> At 36, it's Nintendo's brand new 2DS. Basically, it's a version of the existing 3DS, but without the folding capabilities or the 3D screen. But it'll still play all the 3DS titles, like this Zelda A Link Between Worlds. At its lower price point, it could be perfect for very young gamers or those who simply just don't like 3D. And at 35, sticking with the gaming theme is Ouya, the Kickstarter-funded Android-powered games console that allows you to download a full range of Android games, as well as giving you the ability to create your own. And for less than £100, it's a perfect Christmas present for any budding games designer. At number 34, it's the Now TV box powered by Sky. At £9.99, it's an incredible value stocking filler that brings smart capabilities to virtually any TV. You get Sky Movies and Sports on demand, plus services like BBC iPlayer, Demand 5 and 4OD. There's even an HDMI cable thrown in. At number 33, you voted in the NVIDIA Shield. With a Tegra 4 chipset, it's at the cutting edge of portable gaming, with full access to all the games on Google's Play Store. Plus, you can stream games directly from your PC to exploit its full graphical capabilities and give you next-generation quality gaming. At number 32, it's the Leap Motion Controller, a device that aims to do for the computer mouse what the Kinect has done for motion gaming. Inside here are two cameras and three infrared LEDs that pick up the mouse-like movements of your fingers. There are various apps written for it already, but at the moment it's more about potential, but that potential is endless. At number 31, it's Amazon's Kindle Fire HDX. This 7-inch model has a gorgeous screen and impressive speakers doesn't allow you unfettered access to Google's Play Store, but if you are a dedicated Amazon customer, the interface makes it easy to consume your content. Voted in at number 30, it's my favourite smart TV, Panasonic's TXL 47 ET 60B. With a full roster of online features and a fantastic picture, it makes the perfect TV to watch all your favourite Christmas films this festive season. At 29, it's the Kindle Paperwhite. Now with a backlight, it makes the most complete Kindle yet. It's by far the strongest player in the market, making it the clear winner in Jason Rachel's group test. Matt screen on this Kindle is performing brilliantly. Yeah, even I can shine the light directly on it and you can still read it perfectly. Yeah. At number 28, it's Nintendo's Wii U. Although it's been overshadowed somewhat by the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, it still offers an interesting alternative with its bespoke gamepad and raft of critically acclaimed games like this Super Mario 3D World now hitting the console. It's certainly more than enough to keep any Nintendo games fan happy. At number 27, it's Sony's QX100. It's a wireless lens that you can pair with your phone, either iOS or Android. And the idea is you can take much better quality pictures with the lens than you can do with the camera built into the phone. It zooms in and out, it's got a sensor built in. You can also put the lens in some pretty unusual places. Hmm. Number 26, it's UView, a fantastically intuitive set-top box that allows you to catch up on the last week of TV from the major broadcasters directly from the electronic programme guide. It worked brilliantly when Rachel, Rachel's mum and I tested it together here in the studio. So with the third PVR, that was actually your quickest time. Finding the channels is easier, finding the day is easier. I, I like this one the best. In at the halfway point is Sony's Xperia Tablet Z. It has a gloriously elegant and thin design. It's got a fantastic 10.1 inch HD screen. It's water and dust resistant. All in all, it's a fantastic Android alternative to a full-sized iPad. At number 24, it's Samsung's Galaxy Gear. It may not have received the warmest of critical receptions, but it has helped kickstart the smartwatch revolution, and it could well be an insight into how our phones and watches are going to be acting together in years to come. Hitting number 23, it's Canon's EOS 700D. 
When I tested the latest entry-level models earlier this year at a Civil War reenactment, the 700D came out brilliantly for photo and video quality. It's a brilliant option for budding photographers who don't want to break the bank buying a DSLR. At 22, it's one of Microsoft's latest tablets, the Surface Pro 2. It may not have won my recent full-size tablet test, but it's a great choice if you want to run demanding desktop programs and it's very well made from high-quality materials. In at 21, it's the iPhone 5C, which takes the insides of the original iPhone 5 and repackages them in various brightly coloured plastic cases. It's a slightly cheaper way into iPhone ownership than the wallet-busting top-of-the-line 5S. At number 20, it's Samsung's Galaxy Note 3, with its brilliant display, fast processor and the traditional S Note stylus. It's a delight to use and deservedly top of the tree in the phablets market. At 19, it's LG's 4K TV. When Rachel and Jason filmed with a state-of-the-art 4K camera and Go to Dance champions Chris and Wes to test the set, this TV proved why 4K is the future of television. In 18th position is Apple's delightful MacBook Pro with Retina display. It's got the same design as last year's model, but the processor and graphics have improved, making it overall one of the best high-powered laptops you can buy. At number 17, it's the latest version of Google's 7-inch tablet, the Nexus 7. It's now got an impressive high-resolution bright colour display. It's got 323 pixels per inch and this latest model adds a 5 megapixel rear-facing camera. It's excellent value for money and overall probably the best compact Android tablet you can buy. At 16, it's the latest GoPro, the Hero 3 Plus. This new version has a slimmer profile and, crucially, improved battery life. It still shoots excellent video, including 4K, albeit at a limited frame rate. Undoubtedly, though, it is the premier and most versatile action camera on the market. At 15, it's the Sony Xperia Z1. They've smoothed off the design of the already sleek, short-lived Z and given it an improved 20.7 megapixel camera. It's one of the best Android phones you can buy, particularly if you need your phone to be waterproof and dust resistant. The phone you've voted into 14th slot though, the Nokia Lumia 1020, is arguably the world's finest camera phone. Its incredible 41 megapixel sensor means you can zoom in digitally with practically no loss in image quality. And Windows Phone, although it still lacks the odd app, is a great alternative to iOS and Android. At 13, it's Apple's new iPad Mini. They've added a high-resolution retina display, an improved A7 processor and better Wi-Fi. They've kept the useful 4x3 aspect ratio and the attractive design. Overall, it's the best small tablet you can buy. Voted at number 12 is the HTC One. With its gorgeous aluminium body, its impressive display and great-sounding forward-facing speakers, it was arguably the world's first truly desirable Android phone. In at 11 is the post-apocalyptic PlayStation 3 game, The Last of Us. With its simply superb cinematic storyline and its fantastic visuals and gameplay, it's one of, if not the best game of this console generation, making it the perfect send-off for the PlayStation 3. Voted in at number 10 is Google's new Nexus 5, with its 2.3 GHz Snapdragon 800 processor, 2 GB of RAM, 5-inch screen and running Android KitKat 4.4. It's a state-of-the-art smartphone at a bargain price. But the Nexus 5 couldn't fight off the Samsung Galaxy S4, which hits our number 9 slot. It may lack the aluminium body and design panache, of the HTC One, but it has a whole raft of innovative features and some traditional ones like a removable battery and a memory card slot. At eight, it's movie star hardman Danny Dyer's favorite movie streaming service, Netflix. 
Blink Box, good to know it's there. You know, great new releases and all that sort of stuff, but I'm all over this Netflix, Netflix all day long. Coming in at seven is the winner of my most recent smartphone group test, the LG G2. After getting the help of a London cabbie and his customers, this came out top with the best overall set of features. Well, the touchscreen's really nice on it. It is, isn't it? Oui. And it's quite easy to use as well. At six, you voted in Microsoft's brand new console, the Xbox One. With its new and improved Kinect, its vastly improved graphics capabilities, and its new user interface that means you can watch TV and game at the same time, this is so much more than a games console. It's a complete, ultimate media and entertainment package. In at five is Google Glass. After Rachel and Jason tested it earlier this series, it showed huge potential and looks set to kickstart the wearable technology revolution. It thinks we're driving. Can we make it think we're walking? Oh! Yes! Walk! Mm -hmm. Amazing. Right, let's go. What happens if we do that? Nothing. You just oh, look ridiculous. Is liking it. At number four, it's Apple's brand new full sized iPad, now dubbed the iPad Air. It's 28% lighter and 20% thinner than its predecessor, and it towered over the competition when I recently tested it for its sheer desirability and usability. I like the retina display, I like the naturalness of the colours, the detail, and uh, the screen is very touch sensitive, it's excellent. If only I were an artist. Hmm. Staying with Apple, you voted their latest flagship iPhone, the 5S, in at number three. It shares the same basic design as its predecessor, but it now has fingerprint security, an improved processor and an improved camera, with dual LED flash, a slow-mo video mode, and the ability to shoot bursts of stills at up to 10 frames per second. Phones may be getting bigger, but your vote showed that a small form factor is still popular. Coming just shy of the top spot is the biggest game release of 2013, Grand Theft Auto V. It really showed what the current generation of consoles could do and proved there was plenty of life left in them before the Xbox One and PS4 hit the shelves. But voted into our number one spot for 2013, pulling in over 10% of the total vote is the Sony PlayStation 4. It's been a heated battle between the Xbox One and the PS4 ever since this year's E3 right up to the launch. Sony played their hand perfectly by concentrating on what's important to gamers, the games. And with over a million sold on launch day, it shows that their hard work has paid off. While it's early days in the next generation console war, this vote and the sales figures alone suggest that Sony are well on their way to winning the first battle. And with games like this, Killzone Shadow 4 in their arsenal, they've got more than enough to keep on top. But whichever console leads the way this generation, we can't wait to see what games are thrown up. And going by some of the launch titles of both consoles, we've had some crackers already. And that concludes this year's list. But do make sure to keep logged on to channel5.com slash gadget show for info on all the products on this list, info on the main show, and of course the latest tech news and reviews. And most of all, do be sure to have a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.